Good morning. Please stand for our opening hymn, Hymn 179. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, for who our redemption gave your only begotten Son to death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to daily die to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. 
For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then God said to them, Do not be afraid. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Alleluia! Christ is risen! risen So what? Seriously, so what? What's the big deal? I mean, didn't we just do this Easter celebration a year ago about this time? And haven't we been doing this for the last 2,000 years? So what? What difference does it make if Jesus rose from the dead or not? What difference does it make if we celebrate this each year within the church? Now, let's imagine for a moment that there is no Easter celebration each year. Now, how quickly do you suppose it would take for a generation to forget the cross the empty tomb, and the post-resurrection stories of Jesus. If we don't do this every year, it will be forgotten rather quickly. What if we believed that, that it didn't happen, that Jesus didn't rise from the dead? What would happen if we didn't celebrate Easter and we allowed our children or our grandchildren and all our ancestors to forget this reality? What would happen? So let's take a look for a moment and imagine that Jesus didn't rise from the dead, that his body remained in the tomb, that the women who got there with the spices and the oils saw that the tomb was still blocked by a big stone. They would have had to have figured out how to roll that stone back because the angel was not there to do it. And if they were somehow, by some miracle, able to get beyond that stone and find the the dead body of Jesus, they would anoint him, they would leave him, they would somehow have to get that stone back in front of the tomb again, and then Jesus, like the rest of us, would decompose over time if there was no resurrection. There would be no resurrection appearances by Jesus. He would not have encountered the disciples on the road to Emmaus. He would not have been revealed to his disciples in the breaking of the bread when he's in his resurrected form. He would have no holes in his hands and his feet or in his sides for doubting Thomas to put his fingers into. In fact, we're imagining for a moment that maybe doubting Thomas, what if he was right? 
to say this can't be, it's not possible. Imagine that these things did not happen. Imagine that there is no Easter joy. Imagine that the Spirit was not sent after the resurrection so that there is no church, there is no Eucharist. There is no command from Jesus Christ at the end of the Gospel of Matthew when he says, this is the resurrected Jesus saying, go therefore and baptize all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Without the resurrection, that directive does not come. If we don't have baptism, we don't have the washing away of sins. If we don't have baptism, there's no way to be grafted onto the body of Christ, but there's no body of Christ to be grafted onto anyway because he's dead. Without the resurrection, sin and death have the final word. What does the absence of, resur- of Jesus' resurrection do to us? We lose hope. We lose hope that our loved ones who have gone before us are in a better place. We approach our own deaths with such a sense of finality that we hold on to this world, that there's nothing beyond it, that this is all there is, in an election year, no less. This can't be it. There's got to be more. But if there was no resurrection, then I'm sorry to say this is it. If there's no resurrection, then there's no Christ resurrected sitting on the judgment seat at the end of time. And when we talk about the judgment seat, we're not talking about punishment or fear of punishment. When we talk about the judgment seat of Jesus Christ, we're talking about justice that every human being who has been wronged, and we have all been wronged in one form or another, that judgment day means that justice will come for all of humanity and that sins will be forgiven. Take away that promise of justice and what hope do we have that things will ever be made better or made right? Do you see Do you see the gloomy world? Do you see the dark world, the hopeless world that would exist without Jesus' resurrection? But there is a resurrection. The tomb was empty. Jesus did appear to Mary Magdalene and his disciples. And because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have this Easter day. We have hope as Christians. We have joy As Christians, we have love in our hearts for all of God's creation and all of God's human beings. As Christians, we are called to love. Our baptism demands it of us. We know that because there was a resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is the promise of a resurrection for each of us. And that if there is a resurrection for each of us, that there is something to hope for. There is something better. There is something more powerful than what we can see, touch, and feel right here. There is something greater. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ loves you so much. And I'm not speaking about you in the universal sense of humanity. I'm telling you, I would say each of your names right now if I could, that you... Jesus rose from the dead for you, and you, and you. God, outside of time and space, can conjure up, and in less than a blink of an eye, less than a second, can conjure up and remember and think about and know every single human being who has ever existed, who is existing, and whoever will exist. In a flash, God can do that. And so when Jesus Christ is risen from the dead... He's doing it for you specifically and for me specifically. And so if Jesus Christ loves us that much and is willing to do that much for us, the question begs, what am I willing to do for Jesus in return? Am I willing to give him at least an hour each Sunday? Am I willing to communicate with him daily through prayer? Am I willing to break bread with our Lord Jesus Christ and feast 
at the Eucharist as frequently as I can? Do I live each day like it's my last, desiring to go out with hope and with a legacy of love? The resurrection of Jesus Christ makes all the difference in the world. The question truly is, what difference will we allow His resurrection to make in our personal worlds? Amen. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. Leah, do you desire to be baptized? Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness? Are you sure? <laughs> Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Dear people of God, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, Amen. with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for Chloe and Leah who are to receive the sacrament of new birth and for those who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. 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 Hi, Chloe. Hi there. Oh, thank you. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Chloe, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, sweet baby. (laughs) That's okay. My mom told me I cried too, so... Leah, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. (laughs) Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon Chloe and Leah, your servants, the forgiveness of sin, and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Hi, Chloe. Chloe, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Leah, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Peace.
Good morning. Good morning. If you love a baptism, say hallelujah. If you don't love a baptism, keep that to yourself. Welcome to many visitors and guests who are with us here in person and watching live online. And welcome home, many of the children of the parish who have moved away and are here for this holiday. It's always great to welcome our St. John's folks back home for a brief period. Today's collection, uh, the cash offerings are going to go to Interfaith Outreach. It's an important organization in our community that is made up of all, all, all the different denominations and faith groups, um, including our Jewish brothers and sisters down at um, the synagogue here, and a wide variety of folks. Interfaith Outreach's mission is to help those who are in need. They help fo folks find housing if they're homeless, they help feed people who are hungry. They're an incredible organization. I'm proud to be on their board and for St. John's to be a supporter and contributor to Interfaith Outreach. So please be generous. That, that's what the cash offering will go towards. Um, I think there's an activity for children <clears throat> after the service. I don't have the deets, so I'm going to just let whoever's in charge of that direct you from the commons after the service is over. Is that fair? There's not an activity. What? I don't think there's an activity. Oh, there's not? No. Oh, I thought there was. I don't think so. Oh, sorry, kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to crawl back into my tomb now. Oh, no. <laughs> um, just a note about receiving communion today. All are welcome to come to the rail. Uh, all baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion with us. We'll give you the host, which is the wafer. Um, you can receive that by crossing your uh, hands together like this. Um, you can receive the wine in one of two ways. You can sip from the bigger cup, or you can dip your host, the wafer, into the smaller cup as it comes by, the intinction cup. If you'd like to simply receive a blessing, please just cross your arms over, the, over your chest, and we will bless you as we come by. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal to us your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that, in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share in this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. 
Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. John and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. One last announcement. We're going to have a standing communion station in the back of the church by the exit door. So if you'd like to receive and you're in the back third of the church, you can turn and go that way once we get everyone in place.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage into sin, from May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
my brain.